Open Sousa may very well be my favorite distro of all time. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time over the course of the last three or four or six months or so, you've no doubt heard me talk about Open Sousa. I just made a video a few days ago about Open Sousa, so I've talked about it a lot on this channel, and I will probably continue to talk about it a lot because I'm going to be continuing to use it for quite some time. It's a very good distribution and i would say again that it's my favorite i've talked about how it's the best linux distro although i've also argued that there is no such thing as the best linux distro because really what's best is what's best for you but that's all beside the point open is a fantastic linux di distribution and i've talked about some of the things that i like about it over the course of the last two or a hundred or so days but what i want to talk about today is kind of codify all of those things. I'm going to talk about my five favorite things about OpenSUSE. Just to kind of get them all in one place so you can kind of understand a little bit about why I like it so much and why I've talked about it so much on the channel. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, also do that as well because it'd really help the channel. So OpenSUSE, as I said, is a very, very good Linux distribution. The first thing that I truly like about it, and I think that this is probably my favorite feature out of everything, is that it does a fantastic job with ButterFS. Now, ButterFS, I've talked about what that is in a separate video. I'll link that either you know up here or in the comment section below or the description below. Basically, what it means, just very simply, is that it allows you to screw up or break your system as much as you want and easily return to the point before you messed up. And I like this about OpenSUSE, but it's not an OpenSUSE specific thing. A lot of distributions do this. Uh, the, the Nix users are out there like, oh my god, this is the this is a Nix feature. This is what Nix is all about. Um, true, I suppose. Fedora also uses ButterFS and does a fairly good job of using ButterFS snapshots. Several other distributions use it. You can also set this up on Ubuntu or Debian if you want. But OpenSUSE out of the box does the best job of it because it takes reasonable snapshots at reasonable times and it makes them easily accessible and because it uses legit default very standard sub volume names you can use things like time shift if you want and you can do so right out of the box whereas if you were to try to use time shift on fedora you'd have to make some changes because it doesn't use as it doesn't use standard ButterFS sub-volume names. It uses just something different, and you can't actually use time shift with those sub-volume names. It just doesn't work. You have to make some changes there. OpenSUSE uses the default ones, and it does a very good job of allowing you to basically use whatever tools you want to manage your sub-volumes and your snapshots, which means that it's very easy when you mess up to roll back to a different snapshots and just continue on with your day. And it just works phenomenally well. And I love that about it. Now, again, this feature is not very specific to OpenSUSE. Other distributions you can do this with. But I found that it just works the best, at least for me so far, on OpenSUSE. Now, one of the things you'd think you would need to use those snapshots for very often is actually returning to previous versions of OpenSUSE when something messes up from an update. Because OpenSUSE is a rolling release so the second thing that i like about OpenSUSE is that it is a rolling release but it's also a better rolling release than any other rolling release you've ever seen now that's quite a claim to make matt what does that mean what does that even mean isn't manjaro better or arch or even fedora is technically at a rolling release i suppose kinda sorta what does it mean well on OpenSUSE, you get all of the latest packages for the most part and it is for the most part it's not across the board like it is with arch with arch that is basically like the wild wild west you get all of the early releases of every package that you ever would want and that obviously causes its own problems with open Sousa, and i'm gonna i hate to make this comparison but it's kind of does the manjaro way of things but although open Sousa existed long before manjaro so we'll just call Manjaro doing it the OpenSUSE way of doing things. So with, especially, now when I say this, you guys got to remember that I'm talking about Tumbleweed specifically. So Tumbleweed is the rolling release version of OpenSUSE. This doesn't apply to all versions. So what OpenSUSE Tumbleweed does is that it releases things on a delay. It does testing before it's pushed out to users. 
So for example, with the Linux kernel, we don't get the most recent version of the Linux kernel until usually two, three or four weeks sometimes down the line. It took quite a long time for us to get 6.6. .6. It took quite a while for us to get 6.7. I think I actually just got 6.7 uh, just a couple of days ago, to be honest with you. It's been, it, so it takes some time to get the brand new version of the Linux kernel. And it's the same way with a lot of the core Linux utilities. Now, they obviously don't test everything that is in the repository, nor is the most recent version of everything in the repository. So for example, the Hyperland portal, I've been I've talked about how I've switched to Hyperland. The Hyperland portal that is in the repositories is quite old. It's because it's maintained by someone that's not from OpenSUSE. It's just a dude that maintains that package and they don't push the most recent version. So, Unlike on Arch, where everything is the brand new, shiniest thing, on OpenSUSE, it's a mixture of brand, brand new, tested, and some older stuff. And while it can kind of cause some issues, I would say, because you're looking, especially if you're looking for the most recent version of some things, as long as you're, you know what to expect, I like this way of doing things because it does mean that my system tends to be more stable, which is what I'm looking for at the moment. Now... I want a stable system with newer packages. Otherwise, I'd use something like Debian, which is all about stability, and you can just use the old crusty stuff as long as you want to, and that's how you're going to maintain your stability. With OpenSUSE, you get fairly new stuff without the breakages of Arch, but without using old crusty stuff like with Debian. So I like that way of doing things, and I think that that's probably the best way of doing things, I think. So that's number two. Number three is package availability. So I think that when I came into the OpenSUSE sphere, my biggest worry was how am I going to get all the packages that I want? Because I was so used to having the AUR at my fingertips. Now, before I used OpenSUSE, I was on Fedora and I was on Arch. Those two distributions obviously have a very large selection of packages available to their users. Specifically with Arch, obviously, you have the AUR. With Fedora, they have the COPR or Copper. And both of those systems allow basically users to put things into a repository, kind of similarly, not exactly the same, obviously. And that means that they both have very large selections of software. Like I said, with OpenSUSE, before I knew anything about OpenSUSE, all I thought that they had was the OpenSUSE repositories. And on my first few months of using OpenSUSE, or my first few weeks of using OpenSUSE, it, I thought that basically that's all there was. And I was mostly happy with the selection that I had. I had to build quite a few things, but that was okay. I was kind of expecting that to go in. And I, it got me into DistroBox. So when I, ha when I had to find something that wasn't in the OpenSUSE repositories, I could install it through a Arch DistroBox and I'd be happy and I could just go about my day. But then I learned about the Open Build service. Now I'm going to make a separate v video on the Open Build service, but basically the Open Build service from a user perspective, not from a developer perspective, but from a user perspective is kind of like the AUR. It's not exactly the same technologically, not even close, but from a user perspective, it gives you access to a ton more software. And you can install that software using a package manager called OPI. Now, OPI basically just searches the Open Build Service, or OBS. And if you use these tools in conjunction with Zipper or with Yast, you have a selection that is equal to at least Fedora. It may not be e equal to the AUR. I would probably guess that the OBS and uh, OpenSUSE have significantly less packages in them than the AUR just because it's the AUR. But overall, with the addition of the, the Open Build service and the stuff in the OpenSUSE repositories, I would say that there's a fantastic selection of software. I've come to the point where I hardly ever use DistroBox despite liking it so much because the vast majority of stuff that I need is in either the OpenSUSE repositories or in an open build and service repository. So I've been able to get basically everything that I need from my distribution natively, and that's great. So package availability is quite good on OpenSUSE, and I'm I've been very, very impressed with it. Now, is it as good as the AUR? Like I said, no, I don't think so. 
uh, specifically, you're going to, so let's just talk about a negative. I don't want to be all positive. That'd be ag against the grain here. But the downside of the open build service is that it's kind of like the COPR on, on Fedora and with PPAs on Ubuntu. So people can upload stuff to those things. Well, it's kind of like a UR2 in, in this. So you can upload stuff to those repositories and never update those things again. And that stuff kind of just stays there forever as long as it builds. And that means that you're going to find some old crusty stuff in those repositories. It's just the nature of that beast. So that happens with all repositories that are user run. And the open build services is, is no different there. So just kind of a small negative. But overall, I think the open build service is a fantastic thing. And it offers so much more software than you'd get if you just use the standard repositories. So that's number three. Number four is the community. Now, this is a very vague thing to talk about. And I've had both negative and positive things to say about basically every community that I've joined on Linux. And I think that's basically the same. That's something that is universal because every community has their phenomenally helpful people. And every community has their phenomenally assholic people, if, if we can say that word. You know, the, every community has their bad apples, and OpenSUSE's uh, community is no different. But overall, the community has been very good. I wouldn't say that they're the most friendly bunch, is my only critique. The, they can be kind of prickly, very blunt, especially on the forums. But overall... If you go into your support request with the logs and specific things, explanations of over what is happening to you, chances are you're going to find that help. You're going to find that help quickly. And if you can't find them on the forums, they are on Discord, they're on IRC. I think they have a Telegram channel. There's all, you know, you can go to all different places to get help. The the best place I've found is on their Discord because there's mostly a lot of people there almost all the time. And if you have something to ask and you need support for something you can get that support very very easily and i've never not one time ever been told to read the manual not a single time i have been told to come back with logs several times so if you are going to go in and get help make sure you check your logs and cat that stuff into a file somewhere where you can upload that to the forums it'll save both them and you some time and some bluntness because they do get very blunt when they when you waste their time so and i think that's just the, the nature of the beast i don't think that's anything just you know negative so just know that going in but overall the community has been a fantastic experience and i'm happy to have joined them so i, I think that overall over the course of the next how many 18 months or so that i still have on my op open susa challenge i will contribute to that as much as i can so the community has been good so there's that one now i will say this that my experience with open susa is somewhat unique to me not no, it's not unique to me but it's special to a certain group of people like me people who have managed to get it installed because i have converted quite a few people over to open susa over the course of the last six months I'm very proud of the fact that I've converted those people. I've also talked a whole bunch of other people into trying OpenSUSE. Turns out I'm a bit of an influencer. What is this world coming to? <laughs> really? But I've talked a lot of people into trying OpenSUSE because they, you know, they see me liking OpenSUSE and think, well, maybe I'll have as good an experience as Matt has. Well, that hasn't always been the case with a lot of people. The way that I've seen this kind of happen is that if you can get OpenSUSE to be installed, you're going to have a, an experience like mine. Basically, it's going to be rock steady, rock solid, if you will. It's going to be very, very stable for you. You'll have a lot of packages available to you. You can do all the things that I've talked about in this video and have all those experiences. But the other side of the coin is that a lot of people can't get it installed at all. That That's usually the two outcomes that I've seen with OpenSUSE. Either you can't get it installed at all, at all, in which case you move on to something different, or you get it installed and you find that it's awesome. I don't know why there's no middle ground there or why some people can't get it installed. It's probably a hardware thing, but that seems to be the kind of the two paths that people go down with OpenSUSE. For those people who get it installed like me, I think that most people have the same experience where it's just a phenomenally stable distro. And, and again, guys, you got to remember, everything that I said in this video, I should have talked about this earlier, is specific to OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Uh, the other versions may or not have the same, you know, experience. So just keep that in mind. I should have said that at the beginning, but nobody ever said that I was organized when I was doing this. So 
you should be used to it by now. Uh, anyway, so for those of you who who have gotten OpenSUSE Tumbleweed to install and have used it, you probably have just kind of seen that it is a very, very stable distribution. And that has constantly surprised me over the course of the last 200 days because I've never had that experience really before. Fedora came the closest, and even then I had problems with it, right? Over the course of the time that I used Fedora, there were problems that popped up. Uh, same thing when I was on Redcore for those two months or so, and and over the course of me slowly diverging from a distro hopper into someone who wants to use a distribution that is stable and just works, I found, at least so far, that OpenSUSE has allowed me to do that the best out of all of them, and that is a fantastic experience. It's, again, not something that you would expect on a distribution that is, at least in terms of Tumbleweed, a rolling release. If this was Leap, I'd understand, because that's kind of old and crusty, similar to Debian, but this is Tumbleweed. You'd expect things to break. I've expected things to break constantly. Every t every time I see a 1300 package upgrade, which happens often on OpenSUSE, I get worried because I expect something there to conflict or for it to delete something that needed to be, you know, kept or whatever. I expect it to fail over and over and over again. It has surprised me and just rebooted and I continue on with it just like it never happened. And it's awesome. Uh, the only times I ever have to use a ButterFS snapshot rollback or a, a, a rollback for a snapshot is when I've done something wrong. Like I, I uninstalled Plasma or I installed Hyperland the first time and it didn't go well or I installed Gnome there for a little while and I wanted to get rid of it. And the easiest way to do that was a snapshot. So anytime I've done something really stupid, it's been easy to roll back. I've never you had to roll back a Patreon single time Patreon.com slash LinuxCast. You can also head on over the to the Not store. So... Uh, that's the last one, and again, I can't go on enough about how awesome OpenSUSE has been over the course of the last 200 days, and I'm sure that I will continue to talk about how good OpenSUSE is as I go forth using it. So I'll try not to spam your feeds with how awesome OpenSUSE is, but I will continue to say, sticker, fanboy, OpenSUSE. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on OpenSUSE, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you have a favorite distro, if you've become a fanboy of a distribution, leave your favorite distribution in the comment section below. I'd love to, love to hear from you about that as well. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Which is available at shop.linuxcast.org. There you'll find desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and posters and stickers and all sorts of stuff. All that stuff goes directly to help the channel. So I appreciate everybody who has done that and those of you who will in the future. Thank you so very much for that. Thanks to everybody who does support me I'm on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. Again, I truly do appreciate it. You guys make this possible. So thank you so very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, week, weekend, whatever. And I'll see you next time.